So what happens when Mercury, the messenger of the gods, the lord of communications, thinking, ideas, marketing, merchandising, mercantile, stock markets, messaging, is going to move into Libra? What happens when he does this when he's been there before? Yeah, he was in Libra way back in August 26th to September 23rd. Didn't get very far, guys, only to eight degrees. He's back again for round two, October 10th to the 29th, as he goes in fast speed, direct motion through Libra, completing undone business. And for all of the cardinal signs, which are the Aries and the Capricorns and the Libras, and um, did I say Aries? The Aries, the Libras, the Capricorns, and the Cancers, this is exceptionally important for you. So please stay tuned to listen for your rising sign. Now, guess what? If you're new to my channel, I am Lori Lothian. I'm a lunatic astrologer. <laughs> I'm actually using tropical Western Zodiac. This is not a sidereal. And I'm using tools and techniques from Babylonian and Hellenistic astrology, among others, to decipher the sky and see what it has in store for you in the next few weeks. In this case, regarding Mercury. So let's talk a little bit about Mercury before we talk about what Mercury is just about to do. Mercury has really got quite a large portfolio. He is like the um, guy who goes to the underworld and visits the Hades and Pluto without a permission pass. And he can talk to the dead and he can get scoops going on in hidden realms. So he's very sleuthy. He's also very good at things to do with thinking, ideas, messages, communicating, uh, writing, speaking, and these are, and the stock markets and marketing, merchandising, selling, mercantile markets, markets. When you go to the farmer's market, it's a mercury thing, the farmer's market. It's a mercantile space. So all of this means it's going to impact the world as he goes in a strong, healthy, fast motion through Libra in a, in a positive way, especially when it comes to the stock market turbulence, although I don't know if he can save the day. He may uh, stabilize some things, especially at the end of the month, because he will trine both um, Saturn in Aquarius and he will trine Mars in Gemini at the end of last week of the October, which are good things. OK, and he will also be crossing through a couple of lovely stars like in Arcturus at the end of the month and activating those as well as he does this dance with the Malefics. So we've got some good stuff from Mercury at the end of this month, but how it's going to impact you specifically is what we're going to cover here today. So I want you to listen for your rising sign. If you don't know it, check the description box below. I have a free video on how to cast your rising sign on whole, using whole sign houses on excuse me, free online software. I'm having allergies to either the cat in this house or the leaf molds outside. And um, I'm, I'm traveling right now. And um, I've lost my train of thought. And I'm also recovering from COVID. Um, oh, yeah. And so, yes, yeah, cast your whole sign house rising sign chart okay so uh, once you know your rising sign go ahead and listen to the forecast ahead but you can listen for your sun sign which could be more about purpose and career and your moon sign about your emotional set point how you feel about the month ahead all right so if I have to stop and record the recording to sneeze and blow my nose, I'll do that. Got a lot of grief last video for eating a freaking tangerine when I was in small screen mode showing you the big chart and I was not talking with my mouth full. I chewed, swallowed a slice of tangerine, and then I spoke. But that really upset quite a few people. I had at least three negative comments about that. I explained at the beginning of my video, I barely over COVID not feeling so great. All I can do is eat fruit. I was needing fruit. So I was quietly eating a tangerine a little bit at a time. Ah, <laughs> ah people, people get a grip. All right. So let's get rolling. <laughs> this is going to be fast and dirty. It's not going to be a longer than a 35 minute video. All right. So let me point a couple of things out. When Mercury was stationing to retrograde, that was between, that was around October, the uh, September the 10th. And he stopped at eight degrees of the sign of where he was stationing Libra. And so he never made it past eight Libra. So there's a thing about how much story he left uncovered, right? Another 22 degrees of the sign he didn't even touch. So there's a fresh feeling to this transit. It's not going to be just like it was back between August 26th and September 23rd, when he only slipped into the first eight degrees and then stationed there for a while. He was sitting at eight degrees between September 5th and 10th in direct but slow motion. And he was then retrograding between the 10th and the 14th at the same eight degrees. And what this simply means is if you have any planets at eight degrees of Libra, it's or your rising sign is at eight degrees Libra or your sun or moon, especially, this is a very important return 
of Mercury to this eight degree part. This also applies to the cardinal signs. So the Aries, the Libra, the Capricorn, and the Cancer people. If you have sign, if you have planets in those signs, anybody, like you could be any rising sign, but you've got a planet around eight degrees of the cardinal signs, that planet will be activated by square as Mercury goes back to eight degrees and reactivates the stationary point of September 5th and 14th. So you kind of go, all of us though can go back and say, what were we doing between September 5th and 14th in our lives that Mercury is going to do a finish up the job trick um, for us and complete what he started, but this time he's in a healthy condition and he went back to Virgo to get some un unfinished business there as well. So when he's going to cross over again, that eighth degree is on the 16th of October. So it is around the 16th of October, maybe even two or three days before and the 16th of October and a day after that you're going to get this sense of, oh yeah, this is just like the first week of, this is just like September 5th to the 14th. You know, I'm having like a, a deja vu. This thing is happening again, or I'm going back to finish something or a message or any complete business deal or a project something you were communicating or writing, um, you know, undone stuff, marketing, selling, writing, messaging, ideas will come back for full completion energy on around the 16th of October. Now, I know if I blow my nose, I'm going to get grief from some people. Like, How dare you blow your nose? It's so rude. So I'll get to pause the recording and then I'll come back after I blow my nose. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the screen, which some of you love to see. Uh, in other words, the astrology chart itself, right? And here we have, um, I just moved it to Mercury at 24 degrees. He's on fixed star spica, luck, protection, success, really beautiful star around the, um, he'll be there around the 25th and 6th of October. And as he's doing that fixed star spica thing, he's moving into a trine with Mars. I really like that at the end of the month. So for all signs, I might talk about that because he's also sitting with asteroid fortuna um who's sitting near him and so there's kind of a sense of fortunes because spike it brings good fortune and arcturus as well as right there so it's kind of like a very lucky auspicious sky at the end of the month the 25th to the 27th with this um trying to mars okay and the lucky star spike and arcturus which arcturus can bring riches and glory as well fame um money and so we'll be talking about a little bit about that for your sign <laughs> to bring some spice to it, but also to remind you, go back everybody and think about what you were doing in September, because it's coming back again for a review and a redo in this coming time frame of October 16th. So yes, let's move forward. Now I'm not starting with a Scorpio. I am starting with Aries. So in order to do that, I have to advance the chart into the zone where Aries lives. Um, I think I'll go backwards so I keep Mercury in that trying to Mars. Okay, and let's get rolling and I'll try not to sneeze all my brains out here, which I'm, yeah, I am I swear I can do easily right now with whatever I've got, like the sneeze my brains out thing. <laughs> all right, so let's get rolling. Um, I was going to try something, guys. Hang on. Oh, my God. Okay, let's move through it. So the Aries people, uh, sun, moon, but most especially rising sign. When Mercury was back in September 5th to the 14th, hovering at the eight degrees of Libra, it was in your relationship house. And that is a house of the significant relationships in your life, most particularly like your significant other, or your love relationship partner, but also can be a, a significant business partner. It can also deal with legal contracts and agreements that you have to sign documents around contractual vows or oaths that you would make that's why it's a wedding house or marriage a house or whatever it's a, a contract a marriage is a contract and it's also the seventh house the marketplace for your audience um like when you want to sell your products or services to your clients or your audience it's 10th from the 10th and it can represent a kind of visible marketplace for your stuff that you do in your career especially for independent entrepreneurs so this part of your sky, Aries, was really, really active September 5 to 14, as Mercury was bearing down at the eighth degree. If you're an Aries rising and you have your ascendant anywhere near eight degrees or your sun and moon as well, this is particularly a critical return of Mercury, but all Aries will feel it. So there's going to be the completion of what was unfinished in regards to your significant relationships and maybe audience client outreach. If you are in a relationship already, you probably realize that something might have been going on between you and the one you're with. 
back in September 5 to 14 for sure, but not just then. I mean, Mercury was in Libra August 26 to September 23rd. So if you even think about the longer stretch of time right before the retrogradation, you had a lot going on August 26th and September 23rd with your business partner, with your marriage or love partner. And if you were single, some of you may have met somebody in that time, but that would be, you know, if Mercury brings in a new relationship August 26th to September 23rd for you, it was bringing in a relationship with somebody in which the Hallmark style was decent communication and perhaps even a lot of emails, text messages, or phone calls involved in that relationship. Now, I would say around the 16th, as he stations, if he goes past the stationary degree of eight degrees, um, give or take a couple of days on either side, you're going to reach some kind of definitive, clear, and correct turning point regard, regarding all those seventh house matters, okay? And I mean correct because Mercury's healthy and now he's moving forward in a strong, with strong momentum. He's visible in the sky again. So you want this Mercury to give you the real deal, the real good. So it can literally be information coming through around the 16th from your partner, business or love. It may not even be your stuff. They may have some positive news or developments and you're hearing about their good marketing, merchandising, legal contract stuff, but that's kind of the gist of that. And then at the very end of the month, I really like around the 25th to the 27th, where there's going to be this beautiful trine uh, to Mars from Mercury. And Mars is moving very slow. Mercury is moving very fast, so it doesn't last very long. But Mercury will also be crossing, holding hands with asteroid Fortuna for the, you know, the, the, the way our fortunes fluctuate, but on the most lucky star possible, Spica, which means positive fortunes are unfurling their wings for you guys in love, in relationship commitments, in business partnerships, in things that you're throwing into your audience. If it's Mercury things, you're throwing teachings, you're throwing information, you're throwing your words into the sphere of the public, right? So I'm an Aries sun and moon. So that can apply to say things I do in my YouTube channel at the end of the month doing very, very well, for example. Okay, hope that helps you guys. And we're going to keep moving on because this is a quickie. Well, anything else I want to say? Um, Yeah, well, and I'll just say, Mercury, you did go back to your sixth house to clean up some kind of self undoing addictions, baggage, debts, um, you know, health problems. Yeah, so he was coming out of there, right? So I want you to be aware that that's something he's already accomplished as he spent that spent that retrograde time uh, in the sign of your sixth house. But then he's now really back to working on the seventh house matters. It's pouring rain here. Uh, in Ontario, Canada right now. I'm looking out the window at the really big rain, rain and wind. Fall is here. All right, next, a Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. Well, Taurus people, um, especially the rising sign, uh, keeping in mind that Mercury um, moving into Libra between October 10th and 29th is finishing up unfinished business, especially from the broader picture, August 26th to September 23rd when he was in Libra, but more importantly, September 5th to the 14th when he crosses over the stationary degree, meaning he's going to finish the business of September 5 to 14 in most particular, you know, particularity, I guess. So the, the, the place where this is happening is your sixth house. And this is where you have karmic debt, but sometimes literal debt, you know what I mean? Like debt is like, you know, the thing you, you know, you have to pay money that you owe or you've leveraged money or borrowed money or something like that. So what I like about this, if you think back to September 5th to the 14th, what kind of debt and debt situations were you encountering that may have been gnarly because we had a stationary slowing down and then retrograding mercury almost like where did something almost go forward like did you almost get rid of a debt get a loan get a mortgage change the terms of something or was it about a health issue that came to your attention in September anytime between August 26th and September 23rd but more so September 5 to 14 were you a kind of niggling,ly alerted to a potential health challenge in that window of time. And now you're going back here with Mercury's help to get all the answers you need, all the information you need, all the news you need to resolve that health challenge. That's very possible. Um, Mercury here also can bring news in your coworker colleague space with your employees or your, your, if you're, um, your employer, employee situations. <coughs> so it's also the house of 10, excuse me, post COVID. 
this is it's like I have a cold. It's also the house of tenancy. So this is like uh, signing leases, renting space, um, leasing out space yourself, or if you're a landlord, getting a great tenant. And this is also the house of pets. So news and information about pets can happen as well. But remember to go back to September 5 to 14, because it's playing back over again around the 16th of October in all of the themes that I mentioned for a very healthy resolution, a very Mercury satisfaction to thumbs up kind of vibe. The happy uh, end of the month, I love this Mars trine at the end of the month in which Mercury will try and Mars as he's slowing down in to station retrograde, but he's still moving forward and he's in the sign of Gemini. And you're gonna see that October 25th to the 26th or so, Mars is, I mean, Mercury is on Spica and sitting with asteroid Fortuna. So good fortunes, lucky breaks, really cool shit can happen for everybody at that time, individually or collectively. But in your sky, since it's in a debt house, this could be a really auspicious window of time at the end of the month where Mars, it gives you the action in the earnings house, right? That's your earnings house to move forward in order to create momentum around things to do with your debts, all right? and or with your finances in general, especially when it pertains to also finances and earnings connected to your work or workspace stuff. So look for a happy little silver lining near the 25th, 6th or 7th of October. Thank you, Mercury. What a nice guy. <laughs> uh, he did backtrack into your fifth house to tie up some loose ends, right? When he was in retrogradation. Um, and also that, that means that there may be sort of like he had to pick up some good goodies from the house of inspiration, your fifth, the house of your children, the house of romance, in order to give you all the goods this month. So you just remember that he went back to get something there as well. And it may connect in some way to how you see things unfolding in his return to Libra. He's sort of carrying a packet of romance or events to do with things to do with your children or things to do with your independent business if you have your own company. And just so you know, it was September 23rd to October 10th that he was in that fifth house, okay? Those were highlighted themes at that time. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising. So Gemini's, what's going on here is that you're experiencing the energy of a Mercury returning to Libra, October 10th to 29th, after having been there August 26th to September 23rd. And I didn't even promote my course. I'm so out of it. But anyway, check out my Sky Reader eight week live astrology class starts October 15th. All the information is in the description box below and you get a discount for 30% off if you sign up for my newsletter and you can apply that code to the Sky Reader course. Okay. And um, so what I would say is that this is a very uh, focused area of your sky on children because you're Mercury or lovers or romance or inspiration or pleasure or leisure travel. And with Mercury here, gaming, you might be able to play the lottery and successfully, especially at the end of the month. We'll get to that. But if you're a Mercury, if you're a Gemini rising, especially sun and moon secondarily, but you're ruled by Mercury. So this is a very important transit for you. Whatever Mercury does, you should pay attention. And this is a flowing, harmonious, beautiful trine to your identity. It's really good for your health. It's really good for your wealth. It's really good for your overall sense of well-being as well. So Mercury here can bring down downloads and inspirations October 10th to the 29th from the muse. He was with that same placement, remember, August 26th to September 23rd. But it is particularly September 5th to 14th that we're looking at again for the October 16th redo. So you may be able to figure out later things to do with your children, using emails and phone calls from your children, messages from your lover, text messages from your, your sex partner, um, or information or news about your creativity and creative projects, or particularly your own muse inspiration. All of those themes that may have been happening back September 5 to 14 are coming back around the 16th of October, give or take a couple of days on either side. And this time Mercury has the goods to do a really great job at whatever it is. He was between September 23rd and October 10th in your fourth house, picking up some th loose threads from the house of the ancestors, the house of the mother, the house of your home and land and real estate. And a lot of you may have gone back and renegotiated things to do with property, land, and real estate. And I'm a progressed Gemini ascendant. And it, during that <laughs> time of uh, September 23rd to October 10th, I found out my landlord wanted to reclaim the property. And I had only a month and month lease. So I, I, I realized I have to move. So now carrying this kind of information forward, Mercury is now 
having done the real estate and home stuff, he's now moving in the fifth house, trying to bring a lot of Gemini risings, a greater sense of excitement and joy uh, and mental alert speed and power with ideas that are creative, independent business, especially this is entrepreneurial fifth house. Um, it's certainly really good for winning the lottery. I'm not going to lie to you guys because Mercury is like gaming, playing, having fun uh, tickets, you know, and, um, you know, the fifth house is speculation, luck, money, speculation, gaming, luck and stuff. So sometimes when Mercury's here and in good shape, right, especially in a Venus ruled sign. So especially for Gemini risings, you may win some money. So it's not a bad time to play the lottery anytime between October 10th to 29th. Now, I love the end of the month, particularly because around the 25th, 6th, he's sitting with asteroid Fortuna holding his hand as they are against the light of Spica, one of the luckiest stars in the Zodiac. And a couple of days later, Arcturus, both of those stars are just beautiful and they bring luck and fortune no matter what. And Fortuna, it can be the ups and downs of our fortunes, but with Spica, it's an uptick. So because he's also trining Mars at the same time, Mars will support this lovely uptick in luck and stuff. And again, fifth house. Mars can support it because you take action, make decisions, um, you know, go in a certain direction because he's in the house of your body, you, and towards lucky breaks in the fifth house, lucky breaks in love, lucky breaks in money, lucky breaks with your children and the messages and news and information that deliver those lucky breaks. You hear the good news somehow, right? Email, phone call, text messages, all of Mercury's wheelhouse. <laughs> okay. Thanks for listening, Gemini. All right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign. If you are a Cancer, you're experiencing the return of Mercury, October 10th to the 29th into your fourth house of home, land, and real estate. Now, don't forget, he was there August 26th to September 23rd. It's not a new story, but he will be deeply reinvestigating the eighth degree of Libra, where he was from September 5th to 14th. And if you are a Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Rising with your Sun, Moon, or Ascendant at eight degrees or near that point, this this is especially important for you. And I would say that this is going to deal with things to do with your mother or your parents, maybe mostly your mom, family of origin, ancestral stuff, things going on in your home, from your home. Mercury here is about buying and selling a home or signing a new lease or signing documents or messaging and communicating about property deals or real estate stuff can be very Mercury in the fourth house, especially in Libra. That often looks like real estate contract energy. And yet also you may be doing some Mercury things from your home, studying, researching, um, messaging, communicating, all right, a lot during this October um, 10th to 29th timeframe. Now, Mercury is coming uh, back to redo the timeframe, as I said, September 5th to the 14th, what was going on in your property, home, land, real estate, um, homeland, mother, ancestor stuff that may be coming back to be readdressed a bit by, by you It's your private life as well, what were you what you were doing in your private life back then in September. Now you're going to come back around the 16th of October, give or take a few days on either side with Mercury support to complete the incomplete or unfinished business in this part of your sky. He had to go back between October, September 23rd and October 10th into your third house of siblings, trips, travel, aunts, uncles, cousins, um, skill space learning to get some goods in order to complete the story. So you might reflect on how contact with those people in your life or trips and travel may have had some impact on you. Uh, my sister is a cancer rising and back between September 23rd and October 10th, when Mercury backtracked into the third house, what was she doing? Was she traveling with, or had she gone back home by then? Brain, brain alert. I can't remember. She was visiting me in Vancouver. So I, I think it overlapped with her trip to Vancouver. So I'm her sibling, right? Um, so funny enough, guess what? I'm coming back. I'm back to visit her in her home now, coming up this during this new Mercury transit. In fact, I'm literally going to get to her house around October 10th. So it just spells for her like a return of a sibling to her home. You can't make this stuff up. But um but for you, all of you, it's always going to be the same story, Cancer Rising. So keep that in mind. At the end of the month, beautiful Spica and Arcturus lucky stars at the top of this, this story. Uh, October 25th, 6th, 7th, you know, Mercury's up there with those lucky stars holding hands with asteroid Fortuna. And he forms a trine to Mars at the late degrees of 
Gemini, really good for all of you Cancer Risings to deal up any kind of luck to, with luck, ease and grace, deal up any kind of shit to do with your own self and doing addiction, self-defeating habits and patterns as our Mars stories on the 12th, or have an amazingly deep, soulful, enlightenment-y, dreamlike experience that really lifts you up to another level. And sometimes because a 12th house can rep represent revenue from foreign shores, especially if you're an international revenue maker, like PayPal Stripe accounts, or you know you have clients worldwide or something, this can really show up as a very positive, sudden flush of income from work you do, but it would especially be work you do at and from your home, okay? Yay, you. Leo, sun, moon, rising sign. Well, you're having the return of the Libra transit of Mercury on the 10th to the 29th after he was there August 26th to the 20th, September 23rd. In this is happening in your third house. This is where you, you connect with your siblings, this is your um, aunts, uncles, cousins, and nieces and nephews, extended family to childhood friends from elementary school and high school. It's a third house of your local neighborhood and online stuff as well, like your website, skills-based learning or teaching, and lastly, trips and travel. I think I covered it all, right? I think I said siblings. So all of this is on the radar for you, big time. And you're going to find that in perhaps October 16th or so, you're going to be doing or connecting with themes that were left on incomplete from September 5th to 14th when you had that Mercury stationing that many days, really a long time, eh? 5 to the 14th at 8 degrees of Libra. So now you're going to get more uh, completion on that story. And of course, if your Leo rising is near eight degrees or sun and moon, this is a particularly acute story for you. I mean, you're really going to feel it. Um, I would like to say as well that Mercury did have to go back into your fourth house. So whatever he's going to complete this time around, especially around the middle of no, October, he had to go back and I'm sorry, your second house. So he had to go back into your house of earnings and earning strategy, self-worth, and self-possession, and real literal possessions, and rustle up something there. He had to go back and finish some business there as well that he hadn't completed. So, you know, there may have been changes in your fee structure or promotion. You may have asked for a raise. You may have changed your earning structure or some shifts in that part of the sky. And now that he's in your third house, especially if you are at all somebody who uses the online platforms, this is very good for your marketing, merchandising, communicating, and selling of your stuff online October the 10th to the 29th. I mean, put a sale on for goodness sakes. Um, the end of the month is luscious, right? October 25th, 6th, 7th, Spica, Fortuna asteroid, Mercury holding hands with Fortuna against the light of the most lucky star there is, bringing lucky fortunes to you. Because Fortuna can be up and down in your luck, but with Spica, it's a good time. And so there's a trine to Mars at the same time. So Mars will bring on, still moving slowly, but direct. Mars will bring on some support for this luck for you. And this is luck coming from the house of pennies from heaven. That's 11th house stuff. It's also the house of your hopes and wishes and dreams and plans for your life. And it's also where you get extremely lucky breaks from favors from friends and people who wish to be allies in your life. So it's a very positive house, good spirit, right? It's just a good place. It's a lucky place. So Mars is operating up there and you could get some kind of lucky information news, a phone call connection to a, a someone in your friendship circles offering you an amazing favor, even like a trip, a favor to take a trip or travel a uh, short distance with that third house story. Or you could have somebody uh, doing you a favor and putting you on their social media platforms or lifting you up or sharing you with the world. Anything like that could happen. But whatever it is, it's a really positive time. So look forward to a glow up <laughs> October 25th, 6th, 7th. And it feels lucky for you, right? It feels lucky for everyone, but your luck is third house luck. So a chance to take a trip, a chance to do something special with an extended family member, especially a sibling, um, a chance to learn something. Mercury likes to study and research and learn. He's in the house of learning, skills-based learning. You might get a, a, a wind of an amazing op learning opportunity around the 25th, 6th, 7th, and a lucky break in getting um, accepted in that learning course or something like that. All right. Virgo, sun, moon, rising sign in your sky. Mercury is important because he's the Lord of your rising sign. Of course, your sun and moon as well, but he's a very key planet for Mercury and Gemini people. So he exalts himself in Virgo. 
And so you have to pay attention to him. He is in your second house, second house of earnings, second house of possessions, second house of resources you need for food, shelter, water, etc. cetera. And your voice, vocation and calling and literally speech and the things you eat and put in your mouth are second house things. Well, guess what? You know, he was in this part of your sky, your second house, October, August 26th to September 23rd, right? And then he's back again, you know, October 10th to 29th. So you want to look back to older themes that played out end of August, first three weeks of September, but also pay more attention to September 5th to the 14th, because then he was slowing down at eight degrees and he spent a lot of time at eight Libra. So as far as he got, so whatever might have been going on then it's coming back for review and completion around the 16th of the month of October and this time Mars is moving fast he's powerful he's strong now he's visible in the sky so you could find that the themes of that early September 5th to 14 are redoing in themselves and it's about your money your earnings your voice your calling your vocation food styles what you put in that mouth and but mostly also what you say Mercury is in the house of the voice and he's a god of speech so what you may be wanting to say or needing to say something to somebody uh, uh, for sure around that redo time of October 16th. And if you do, you're going to find that it was the right thing to do. Me be ca very candid with somebody in your life. Um, now, the other thing I'd say is that you may change your earning structure and may change your job. Now you could get a new job or you could get something better in the job you have. So that's also a very strong possibility around the 16th of October. And then finally, Virgo, you could say that the lucky times are coming around the 25th, 6th, 7th, when Mercury is with Spica and later Arcturus, <clears throat> but also holding hands with asteroid Fortuna. So good fortune is trying to befall you with a trine to Mars. And that could bring a really positive development in your workspace and career. If you're a householder, a mom, a student, your career is to be a student, your career is to be a stay-at-home mom, but you're, that part of your sky, your visible action in the world, your reputation for what you're all about, that's where Mars is, and he's coming from that place, and he's trining this lucky October 25th, 6th, 7th time frame, so it could be a promotion, it could be a raise, it could be a brand new job altogether that you're just absolutely head over heels in love with and you're like I can't believe how lucky I am I can't believe how lucky I am that kind of thing so look for the luck in the money and work area of the sky anyone like me who's self-employed well then it could be just an earnings boost and a reputation earnings boost in your business of some sort all said and done really good for your money really good for your career path as well All right, Libras, sun, moon, and rising. Well, it's all about you, right? It's happening in the house of you. Go back to August 26th to September 23rd. Mercury was moving in your first eight degrees of Libra. So if your Libra is or ascendant is anywhere near eight degrees, let's go from, I don't know, let's give it like from whew, five to 11 degrees. It's an like incredibly important journey of Mercury's return for you because Although he was there for a long time, September 26th to the 23rd, it was between September 5th and 14th that he was stationed at eight degrees of Libra. And if it was on your ascendant, especially, wow, he's coming back around the 16th and uh, the 16th of the month, he sits back at, and he's moving quickly around the month of the 16th of the month, he sits on that eight degree mark. Now, you know, just a couple days before a day after, you're going to feel like this kind of like, oh, deja vu, back to September 5th to 14th. And it's back. I'm back to that finishing that, doing some unfinished communications, speaking, uh, writing, messaging something, ideas that you had concocted back then that you didn't have a chance to complete. All of those things are going to be really back again for review, but in a very positive way. And, you know, Mercury had to go back to get some junk out of your closet of your 12th house, which she was doing from September 10th. Uh, September 23rd to the 10th, that can look like getting rid of your own sabotage, self undoing, you know, negative habits and addictions, or things like secret backroom deals that you had to pull off in order to move forward in your mercurial life. So what I love about the end of the month is October 25th to the 27th, Mercury is sitting with Spica. And this is a lucky star and it brings fortune and luck and health and goodness and nourishment. And he's also sitting a little bit later, day or two after with Arcturus. But when he does all of this and Arcturus is protection and, and wealth and riches. As he's doing this, he's doing this holding hands with asteroid Fortuna. And Fortuna is about your fortunes up and down, but with Spica there, it's up. It's up, good fortune. And it's a trine to Mars as well at the same time. 
Mars at 25 degrees or so of Gemini will be in this trine to this action down here. And wow, for you, this could be really positive legal agreements and visas, passports, chances to travel to foreign lands coming through, um, things to do with your father or father-like figure coming through in a positive, lucky, explosively good way. Good news on the academic higher education front. Good news, news of a court or legal affairs, if I didn't say that already. And lastly, book publishing. I do know some Libras who are really into book publishing. And if you want to you know, get an agent or you've been looking for a publisher, these are breakthrough times for you. No doubt about it. So look for some exciting end of the month positivity in your world. And you are the agent of it too, because even though the, because Mercury is in the house of you, it's by virtue of the email you send, the phone call you make, the speech, the thing you say, that you allow this luck to transpire. You say it, you write it, you speak it, you ideate it around the 25th, 6th, 7th of October, and it booms out with support from Mars from your ninth house, okay? And I gave you all your ninth house delineations already, so keep that in mind. All right, Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is an energy of uh, Mercury um, moving back uh, into um, Libra, October 10th to the 29th. He was there, as I mentioned, uh, in the beginning of the video, August 26th to September 23rd. So it is a return to an older story. We're going to see themes that you're already familiar with uh, from that first journey coming back. But more importantly, Scorpios, it's going to be returning uh, stuff to you that was incomplete, incomplete September 5th to the 14th, right? So that was when Mercury was at eight degrees because it's a subtle house to 12th house and Mercury is a dream messenger and the house 12th house can be the one of the dream houses along with the ninth. You may indeed have some very powerful dreams. This could be a very subtle, very subtle transit. Unless you make money from international revenue and shores, which some people may, because Mercury here is marketing and merchandising, it may have more to do with your inner life. Okay, so especially if you've been trying to kick an addiction or a bad habit of some sort, and maybe you tried your best to do that, especially back around September 5th to the 14th, but anytime August 26th to September 23rd, failed at getting rid of the nicotine habit or the weed habit or the wine habit, whatever. And now you have the power and the strength and the momentum around October 16th, give or take a couple of days to really seal the deal and make a difference in that part of your sky and get over something. All right. Um, there's a super, and Mercury had to also go back into your 11th house, maybe to secure uh, connections with larger social groups, favors from friends, or help you reassess your vision of, and your dreams and your goals for your life. And he was doing all of that October 10th to the, tw October, September 23rd to the 10th. So now he's got the goods, right? And he's, and he's going to bring a big luck bolt energy at the end of the month when he sits with Fortuna, the asteroid for fortunes, vagaries and ups and downs of fortune, but sitting with Spica, who's good luck, a very good luck time around the 25th, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th of the month, mostly 25th and 6th. And you could find it with a trine, supportive trine from Mars in your eighth house. It could be a, a busting out financially, especially with loans or mortgages, credit card debt, tax rebates, inheritances, spousal money, shared resources, palimony, alimony, spousal support, whatever. So all these things suddenly uh, like lucky breaks for you in this part of the sky. Um, so looking forward to that. And in fact, you know, just to say for you, Mercury will try and Saturn earlier in the month, uh, around the 22nd, 23rd. For some Scorpios, this looks very much a lot to do with land, property, real estate, mortgages, uh, buying, selling, and potentially that those themes playing out. Okay. Um, anything else? And um, no, I think that's it. Moving on to the next sign, which is Sagittarius. So Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. The energy of the return of Mercury to Libra on October 10th to the 29th, after having been there August 26th to September 23rd, is all about your 11th house of good spirit. This is a positive house and a lucky house. Mercury here can bring good news around finances, sudden windfalls, um, good news from friends, support and good news from friends larger social groups of belonging are very productively happy and supportive for you. And if you want to put messages out into the world, into the larger social sphere, sometimes the 11th house can look like a good place to do it. Um, also, you know, Mercury can be about news that has to do with 
greater gains that you're able to acquire for your career path, you know, greater earnings or greater um, perks or rewards from the career that you're currently on. Now, you want think back maybe to September 5th to the 14th when he was at eight degrees, now, especially if you're a Sagittarius with a sun, moon, or your Sagittarius rising at eight or around eight degrees of Sag, very important return time on October 16th of Mercury to eight degrees where he was from September 5th to the 14th. This could really light your sky up with some very positive completion of unfinished business that you needed to get done, but now you can actually get it done. The thing is all falling into place. This is so, so positive. So looking forward to that time for you, especially also the greater luck at the end of the month, October 25th. Well, before I say that, you know, Mercury went back right into your 10th house of career and workspace and visible reputation between September 23rd and October 10th. And that might have just been a time where you were kind of like having to review some of your goals about your work and your agreements with your workspace or your boss or your colleagues or your coworkers or whatever, or make some changes in your what you think is the most important part of your visible reputation. Um, but anyway, but then at the end of this month, October 25th, 6th, kind of. Thing. Mercury will be with lucky star Spica in the sky while sitting with asteroid Fortuna and in a positive flowing trine to Mars. This looks like good news coming from your spouse, your marriage partner, or your business partner, or positive developments coming from the marketplace audience clients sphere of your chart seventh house momentum there and good news and mm, sometimes with this kind of combination legal contracts that you need to finalize because contracts are the vows those agreements and contracts are the seventh house are off to the races in the most lucky way in fact i'd say lucky terms on the contract lucky breaks on the contract signing on dotted lines i are just full of good luck and so look for lucky legal contractual breaks as well coming through October 25th to 6th. Sometimes this could be your partner's news as well because Mars is activating from the 7th and they may have some stupendously positive news and it might even involve some great money uh, stuff for them as well. Alrighty, moving on. <clears throat> Capricorn, sun, moon, rising sign. In your chart, this is an energy of Mercury returning to Libra because he was there August 26th to September 23rd, coming back again October 10th to the 29th. The part of the sky is your visible career reputation, your success ambition uh, outward, you know, yeah, you in the world, how successful can you be part of the sky, your 10th house. Now, for you, you might actually be um, looking at something that you were doing September 5th to the 14th, all right, when Mercury was in the eighth degree of the sign of Libra, especially if you as a Capricorn have your ascendant sun or moon near eight degrees of Capricorn, let's go like five to 11, then you're really going to go, oh my God, September 5th to the 14th, I was working on something, an idea, a, a project, um, a negotiation, um, a, me a mediation, a, a, pro a project in my career area. And it was something about it got stuck or held up because Mercury had to retrograde backwards, right, into your ninth house of legal contracts, visas, foreign travel, passports, uh, book publishing, um, paternal type figures, okay, and he had to get some unfinished business done. Now he's back in your 10th house. And so he's going to go, okay, I got what I needed in your ninth house. Let's move forward. And suddenly you can get this momentum around October 16th, around the unfinished business of September 5th to the 14th. So around the 16th, look for momentum and agreements and negotiations and career developments to go very, very well. Lucky, lucky energy around the 25th and 6th of the month as Mercury with fixed star Spica in your 10th house will also sit with asteroid Fortuna and trine Mars. And so get ready for some very positive developments because in six houses of workhouse as well. The health, it could be a health issue that's very positively turning out on your behalf, but it's also a workhouse, you know, things to do with your colleagues in the coworker space, the job space, the workspace you share with self or other, the routines and the modalities by which you do the daily work that you do, that you are of service, not servitude, hopefully. And all of a sudden something really picks up a big perk here. So, I mean, honestly, I don't know, this could be like, you know, the, the boss moves you to a bigger office or the colleague that you uh, wanted to always work with is suddenly available to partner up with you, or you're put in a really good position 
within the company that you didn't think you even qualified for. So it's just good, good stuff in that area of your sky Capricorns. This is very positive career development turning points at the very end of October. So get ready for feeling grateful and lucky around that Spica Fortuna timeframe, the 25th, 6th of October. Now let's keep going and talk about me. <laughs> Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. And um, I am so not even promoting my Sky Reader course. What the hell's wrong with me? But it starts October 15th. There are a few spots left. Come jump aboard. Check the description box below. I have no promo vibe, guys. I'm too COVIDed out. I only slept six hours last night. Let me complain to other Aquarians like me. So Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. What we've got going on here is we've got the situation of... Um, we like when Mercury is doing Libra things because it trines us from the ninth house. So number one, it offers up a lot of flow. And anyone who is an ascendant sun or moon um, between like five and 11 degrees, you really get a lot of juice from this, okay? And you, you're really going to feel it, yay you, because of that return of Mercury to a place in the sky that he didn't finish his business in. So between September 5 and 14, Mercury was trying to do something in your ninth house. And that could be like it was trying to get you um, a good good legal outcome, a passport or a visa, a court win. He may have been trying to get you uh, a foreign land trip off the ground. He may have been trying to get you an educational perk or some kind of good news, like you wanted to be accepted at a certain school or university or something like that. And or a book publishing deal that you really wanted to pull off, et cetera. All ninth house stories, right? And yet, you no, know, something got stuck or it didn't get done. And he had to go back. He had to go back to your eighth house of your loans and mortgages and, and inheritances and um, your deeper, uh, the old cult mysteries and magic of the eighth house and the house of the dead. He had to go back there. But then he had to move forward after having reclaimed something. And so from the 10th of October to the 29th, he's back in Libra where he's ready now he's ready to finish what he didn't finish and so the finishing point is october 16th give or take a couple of days on either side so look for a completion around undone ninth house business okay now it's funny that's when i start my sky reader teaching my sky reader class and when i go back because i'm teaching a class i'm the professor of the, the eight-week course this could uh, for me as an aquarius rising september 5 to 14 um, I have to go back and think, what was I doing? Was I trying to get the promotion off the ground? Was I trying to re rearrange the course in some way, which I've already done? I don't know. But this is like now completing that October 16th off to the races. It's all very, very, very positive. And I love this for Aquarius people. I'm not even thinking uh, anything but the positive here for us. Now, at the end of the month, on the 25th, 6th, we have Mercury conjunct fixed star Spica, which is a star of luck, opportunity, success and protection, nourishment and good things. And with Fortuna, the asteroid of fortunes, this means positive fortunes are happening for you with the support from Mars in a trine. And Mars in the fifth house is like, oh, okay. You let me support you from the house of money luck, speculation luck, gaming luck. <laughs> oh yes, Aquarius is buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> because the ninth house is governments and bureaucracies. And of course, when you win money from a lottery, it's governments that give you the money, it's government run lotteries. Um, but also fifth house is romance, pleasure, sexuality, children, play, um, inspiration, independent business enterprise. Okay, all of that is where this Mars sends a lot of love up to Mercury, Spica and Fortuna in the ninth house. Um, certainly it can mean a lot of different things, but one of them would be an opportunity to go on a leisure trip abroad, um, coming your way in the most lucky way possible. Like I'll give you an example. Like somebody says, oh my God, you know, um, I'm going to be leaving my, uh, my, my property in the south of Portugal um, and I need someone to watch my house for me for a month. And it's really still warm there at this time of year. Would you like my place? You know, making stuff up. But it's like lucky tri trips or lucky leisure travel. Okay. Or lucky court case outcomes or lucky developments with romance and travel or lucky developments with teaching or learning environments uh, that also offer up some excitement and some passion for you uh, at the end of the month. So it's some kind of yippy vibe at the end of the month. But don't discount lottery tickets or gaming or hitting a casino, but don't over, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. I mean, I'm not telling you to spend all your money to win money, okay? We get the gist, right? Know your limit, play within it, as they say here in Canada. All right, let's keep going and move onward. Oh, your children could have good news as well. 
This could be really positive news, especially if you have a child in academia at the 25th, 6th, 7th, some positive news, like, I don't know, they get you know, accepted into a really good program or they get the, better, the best grade they've ever had in their life. It could be a small perk, but it's some very happy news there as well. Last but not least, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Sign, having the return of Mercury to Libra, where he was August 26th to September 23rd. He's back again, October 10th to the 29th. And he's going to finish up unfinished business. For you, this part of your sky is your eighth house. This is your mortgages, your bank and loans, your inheritances, your tax monies, your, um, your shared resources with a spouse or partner, your business partner monies, okay? So all of that area, and also the house of the dead and Mercury is a psychopomp. So this is also your occult mysteries talking to dead people place. <laughs> and um, Mercury will be there, but go back to September 5th and to the 14th, because when he was hanging at the eighth degree of your eighth house, he was unable to complete something in your finances. And he had to go back again to your seventh house or your spouse or your business partner or your audience and marketplace in order to collect some unfinished stuff there and then take it back to your eighth house. So keep that in mind, because um, a lot of this could be a lot to do with your partner, not you having had to go back and meet that partner, love partner, marriage partner, had to go back and get some kind of unfinished business done that to do with negotiations, agreements, verbal or written uh, contracts and legal affairs. And now he's back in your eighth house and we're ready to rock, really gonna go for it. And some, for some of you, it's a real estate thing because with Mars trining Mercury at the end of the month from the house of real estate, this is like getting that mortgage document, getting that uh, renegotiated financing, uh, securing the loan, uh, changing, buying or selling a home. These are all things that look really good for you as a Pisces rising sun or moon. Now you go back, as I said, to September 5th to 14th, because that on October 16th or so, give or take a couple of days on either side, it's going to play back out again. And it's going to be the real deal, not the or aborted or half-assed deal that may have happened September 5 to 14. Conversations that were ongoing then are returning, but this time they're declarative, directional, and powerful. October 25th to the 26th-ish, Mercury sits with lucky fixed star Spica and later Arcturus, along with asteroid Fortuna. Bottom line is lucky fortunes in your money story around those loans and mortgages and things to do, especially with land, home, and real estate. So for some of you Pisces, it could be definitely looking at developments. It could also be a, a lease, you know, instead of a buy and sell thing, but whatever, it's all very positive. And if any family legacy money was tied up or held up or inheritance money was withheld or tax rebates were withheld or money that you thought was coming, should be coming to you from your family of origin in some way was held up or your homeland if you're off abroad and the government didn't send you either check they were supposed to, then all of a sudden this is going to turn out really well, <laughs> October 25th, 6th or so of the month. All right. Thanks Pisces for listening. Thanks everybody for bearing with me. I stopped blowing my nose actually, which is great. Sorry, I ate a tangerine last video. Deal, deal with it. And um, what else? Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching live with me in the premiere. Thanks for being here, guys. Hit that bell for notifications. Do the, do the thing. I help my channel grow. I'm at 10,600 subscribers as I record this. This, uh, this video goes October 7th to my Patreon community. You're all probably going to be getting this uh, in your feed on the 8th or the 9th of the month already. Ha. <laughs> Have a great day, all. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. <laughs>